Just about one year ago today, I posted a video on how to decorate or design your spot in a Scandinavian style way. And in the beginning of that video, I had to go back and watch it. I was thanking everyone for passing 100 subscribers, which I still think was very cool. These are videos that I was already making and I was sharing with my, you know, my sphere, the people that I know closely and in person. Um, and I one day decided to just start a YouTube and, and, uh, and share it with other people. And today, I checked it and we've just passed 4,000 subscribers on the channel. I think we're at about 4,020. So again, I want to say thank you. It's just, it's just cool to see the channel grow and to see that there are other people out there who also enjoy the videos, watching something that you create, you know, get a little bit of traction and, and have some more people like it. It's, it's just fun to watch. It feels very productive and I'm happy about it. So thank you for everyone that continues to subscribe and and all the new people coming in and, and joining the channel. So with that being said, why don't we celebrate by looking at a home which I very much like. It's brand new construction. It's right here in Washington, DC. This area, it's Logan Circle. This property is literally two blocks away from the physical Logan Circle. If you're not from this area, Google it. You'll, you'll figure out how it is. We have a couple circles in the city. Uh, with that being said, in terms of the walk score and what you can get to and the activities you can do, you can't get better than this. It's smack dab in the middle of everything. I did shoulders yesterday. I can't hold up my arms to hold this camera. I'm sorry if it's bouncing around a little bit. If you choose to look into it, lots of these homes in this area have a rich depth of history and it's crazy to look into their storylines and why they were built and how they were built. This section of homes, homes was built in the 1880s. Obviously this one has been renovated, but it keeps a lot of its original features intact, which I'll explain when we walk through the home. I'll try to include as much as I can while going through this house. It is quite a bit <laughs> to know about the home uh, with the combination of the new construction and you know looking at how cool it is. And then secondly, with the history that's contained within these homes. One of the coolest parts about being in Washington DC or if you're in any city that has so much historical depth to it is that the things these walls have seen, the, the, these houses have been, you know, they're four times as old than many of us and the generations they've seen and, and the events that they've seen and they've stood here and, you know, tested time. And DC continues to keep these original structures to preserve the nature and the look of the city. You can repoint the brick, you can paint the front, you can kind of restore it, but it never really changes. And I think that is so cool about living in a city like this and the homes that are within it. This is me rambling. I'm going to turn this around and go ahead and show this house um, and try to explain to you as much of it as I can. All right, so here we are at the front of the house, again, with that old Victorian style, which the city aims to preserve. It's very a very common style. You can see all the neighbors that preserve that facade. So repointed and painted and restored, of course, but architecturally and design-wise not really changed at all. Something about this unit or this house, again, I did say this was a condo unit. So this row home itself is actually, normally in DC, the width of the row homes is about 16 to 18 feet. This one is extraordinary in the size that it's actually 25 feet across. So the new developer that took over uh, made this originally a 6,000 square foot, what would have been mansion at the time, took it and made it into two units. So you have one 3,000 square foot unit, you have another 3,000 square foot unit. The unit upstairs is now under contract. It's going you know, to be sold to the new owners. This unit down here is still available. Uh, I didn't mention the price. This is a four bedroom, four and a half bath, 3,000 square foot condo uh, priced at about two and a half million, just shy of two and a half million. That one up there was uh, right, priced right around three million. So let's go ahead and uh, step inside here. So you have the one unit there that's under contract, and now we're going into this unit. Look at this. So this home is very light and bright. It has a ton of sunlight that just pours in 
through the oversized windows. It looks like we're working with the Anderson Black windows uh, on the exterior. You have the white oak. They call it white oak hardwoods, but of course they're, you know, they're not actually white. It just means that they're a very light washed out oak hardwood. These are five inch planks. And then of course the what, what I prefer and like more is the finish on these. This is not that glossy 2005 hardwood type finish, which I know a lot of people still like, but this is that satin natural finish that goes across uh, that, that I think is very, very appealing. So a quick scan through a lot of white mixed with the light hardwoods and then the the closet and pantry doors and anything of that nature was also created in the two panel white oak uh, uh, woods, these fir wood doors. And I think it looks absolutely fantastic paired with the black accents. You have a custom gas fireplace here. Two things to mention as we get closer. One, see this, original wood from the home and they have incorporated it into the restored design. They're taking salvage wood beams and joists, and they're actually putting it in the home. So you're taking a 150 year old piece of wood and incorporating it into a brand new design. I think that's amazing. You have a nice large oversized island here, probably five feet across, maybe about seven feet in depth. And then of course you have these shaker cabinets, uh, these, um, I wanna call them flat or, or panel, but shaker cabinets, which hide the refrigerator, oh, refrigerator and whatnot, gives it a nice clean look. Once again, we're getting an appearance by the Caesar stone, Quartz, these are Imperial white quartz countertops. They're very pretty in person if you're not able to tell through the video. And then in the back, oh, something else to mention, the cabinets. This is a, um, oh my gosh, uh, a Vienna fog. That is the color of this. These are not pure white and because they're not pure white, it really adds an interesting effect to the kitchen. These would look great in white, but that slight fog tint is really what pulls it together. And then you have this brushed, um, not a rose gold, there's probably another name for it, but it is like a brushed faded gold for the handles and the hardware on the cabinetry. You have the melee appliances throughout the whole house. And then this back here, you have this Moroccan sea salt tile, which really adds to the depth of the kitchen. You're gonna notice this a few times within this house, and I like it. Lights where they're not traditionally, essentially taking lights and capping them into the wall. The other place you're going to notice this is in the bathrooms where they actually take the light and encapsulate it into the mirror. Uh, it's a very cool look. It's not something that you see often. This right here, original, original Joyce of the home. And the fact that they kept that intact and brought it into the new design, it just, it brings so, it brings a feeling into the home that's hard to describe, but it just, it feels right. It feels right that it's in here. You of course have the custom made stairs, the shadow boxes and paneling on the walls, the custom uh, black posts and balusters being built in here. This leads out to the driveway, which I'll show you in a second, and also to the other unit. It's their stairway out. You have the first bedroom here on the main floor with a nice size closet. And then if you live in DC, you know, or if you live in any major city, uh, you know, Parking is a luxury. So out here, you have your private driveway to park. You'll have a garage fob um, clicker to raise the door and everything. But having that for yourself is very nice. And here is the first bathroom. 
Again, we're working with the white countertops. Same as in the kitchen. So they did not go cheap here. Many times builders will go cheap on the bathroom countertops and they'll, you know, they'll have the kitchen countertops look nice. But these are actually the same cabinets that Vienna Fog as impaired with the Impera um, countertops. And of course those gold fixtures. Here are the lights I was speaking of where they're actually building them straight on top of the mirror rather than your, you know, the, the style where they would be hanging down from the wall over the mirror. These are actually in the mirror. I think that's a nice little feature. Nice walk-in. So with this unit, as I mentioned before, this is originally a 6,000 square foot house divided into two 3,000 condo units. I keep telling you condos because that's what they are, but I, this feels bigger than <laughs> most townhouses that you would find. This is a this is a nice sized luxury home. With that being said, this is the lower unit. So you have your main level, which we are standing on. And then the, the majority of the bedrooms and all of that is downstairs. But when they create a luxury unit like this, again, the original Joyce, it's, it's so cool to see them reappear throughout the home. Uh, when they create a luxury unit like this, they try their best to have it so that the bottom floor does not feel like a basement, that it's comfortable, that it has light, that it's open, and that, you know, you don't feel like part of your living is in a cellar. Here's the first bedroom that we step into. Nice big bathroom. And of course, the closet right back here. This is convenient actually to have the closet tucked away into the bathroom with the pocket door. That way you don't have to come out here and disturb anyone. Uh, you know, if you are a couple and you're using this room, you can get ready for work if you get ready for work at different times and uh, everything be done in there and just exit on out. Oh, mechanical. So this is going into the back of the home. This is gonna be the bedroom located in the back. You know, I had someone mention in one of my videos, a video that I did a while ago, probably seven months ago, they said that I was going through the homes too quickly. I think this is one of the tours where I wasn't speaking. I was just flying through that thing. And I apologize if that person thought that the video was too fast, but you have to understand when you're dealing with homes that are 7,000, 8,000 square feet, in order for it to not be a 45 minute video, I have to move through it relatively quickly. I'm trying to slow this one down just a tad, but I'd like the video to not be extremely long. So a little bit of laundry tucked into this, this closet area. Of course, you know, you might want to get bigger units or maybe not, depends what you need. But they're located down here on the bedroom level so that you're not carrying the laundry up and down the stairs. This section of the home, so that's the front end of the home, okay? This section of the home is very cool. So we have this, you know, this is a close off, right? So it's almost like this area beyond here is its own suite. This is literally a luxury condo down here. So if you wanted to, you could take the bottom half of this and rent it out to someone else. Or maybe if it's a, a family and had older children, they would just give them this area down here so they could have their own space. I don't know, something like that, but you have the, kind of studio style bedroom down here, which is still a very nice bedroom. The sliding oak hardwood doors, that's a full closet behind there. And then there's this. Now this is pulled out a little bit. I can press it all the way back in, this partition wall. And this partition wall, when you pull it out, just reconfigures. I don't wanna pull it out all the way because I don't wanna get stuck, but it does pull out all the way, right? And it separates the room completely so that this is more like a true bedroom 
and then that would be a separate rec area, which we're about to see. Or you can slide it in completely and choose and treat the whole area as a studio style apartment. Here's a bathroom down here. So let's press this door back. And as you can see, this area down here has its own family room, living room, rec area, whatever you might want to call it, eat-in kitchen, and with an eat-in kitchen, a full kitchen. This is, a, this is a very nice kitchen here. I mean, upstairs, you know, I'm showing you an extravagant kitchen that belongs in a luxury house. This is nicer than most luxury apartment kitchens here in DC. With a lot of apartments, we deal with, you know, 600 square feet of space, and this is the common size of a kitchen. This is really nice. and not slacking on any of the materials, still providing the basement kitchenette with the same materials, the same cabinetry, the shaker cabinets, the Vienna fog, the Imperial white, still using all those materials in the basement kitchenette. And then of course this door leads out straight to the front of the house, right up there. So it has its own separate entrance. So this person down here literally has all of their own space, and they're able to come and go as they please. All right, head right up one back here. Okay. Let's go ahead and flip this around. So as I mentioned before, this is a home that is rich in history. Um, real quickly, again, four bedroom, four and a half bath, just shy of two and a half million here in Logan Circle in Washington, DC. This home is very rich in history. Since it was built, it was originally commissioned by, I think his name was George Prince. And what he was, was a famous photographer who was like a private photographer, photographer, photographer for the presidents at the time. Each time a new um, president was elected into office, he would be the one to take the photos of those presidents and any prominent photos which were shared with the public and the community. Secondly, after that, this home turned into a, um, it, was, it was taken, taken, it was, I don't know how they obtained it, I, I don't know, but the African American um, uh, society and community here within the city began to use this as an exclusive um, club. And not so much like a nightclub, like, you know, just drinking and partying and stuff like that. Not like prohibition era type club, more like an invite only um, club where they would get together and they would have dinners and they would talk about philosophy and education and politics and, ed and education twice things that the intellectual mind would want to discuss in order to further the African-American community as a whole. So this place did that for, for roughly, I, I believe it was 60 or 70 years, you know, decades of time being a prominent spot. This exact building. So when I talk about what these walls have seen and the time that has, that has lapsed, uh, while they've been constructing here. It's just very cool to think of. But now you have a tour of this DC luxury condo here in Logan Circle. I hope you enjoyed it. I thought this was a very, very cool home. Whenever I spot one and see one that just has a little bit more, you know, of an interest element to it, I like to make sure that I share it. See you in the next video.